Okay, in this segment we are going to talk about viscous flow in pipes. In the earlier segment I talked about the laminar flow and today I'm going to talk about the turbulent flow and in fact will converge these two segments into one constructive figure that you will be able to use for all laminar, turbulent and transitional regimes. Okay, now let's start with the turbulent flow. One fact is that turbulent flow introduces significant complexity to our analysis. So this is a fact. Because as we discussed in the laminar flow, if the velocity is to the right, then I only have a u component, but when I have a turbulent, now it's going to be a 3D, u, v, w. Okay, so it's a bit complicated. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to introduce an equation and you will actually see that it is fairly similar to what we discussed before. Okay, so here is what it reads like. Pressure 1 divided by rho g or the specific weight plus v1 squared over 2g plus z1. Alright, so I'm going to stop here. And you may, f you may remember this equation is the Bernoulli's equation, however it's divided by g, which I can do, right? Plus hp, this is power input, okay? Now equal to p2 over specific weight plus v2 squared over 2g plus z2 plus hl. And this is called head loss. Okay, so this requires some conversation. First, this, look at this first three terms, look at this first three terms on the right hand side. If my hp is equal to zero, my hl is equal to zero, basically this is the Bernoulli's equation. That's the first thing that I would like you to understand, okay? So there's nothing new from those three terms. Let's look at the last term, hp, power input. So we talked about this before. Let's say that in my system I have a pump which is inputting some power into my system. So it will come into this, okay? If I have a turbine, etc., or a propeller, so I will come over here as an input. If you remember from the control volume principles, we had the similar input for the conservation of energy, right? It was W dot depending on the case. So that's what I'm talking about here as well. The only thing that I want to talk additional is what is the unit of this power input? Is this watts? Um, not quite, right? So the equation must be dimensionally homogeneous. What is the unit of this? Length, right? So if I'm using a psi, it will be meter. If I'm using British gravitational, it will be feet, right? So this needs to be in terms of a length, okay? So that's kind of unintuitive, I would like you to be aware of that. And let's talk about the last part over here, head loss. So it's like the loss, we discuss this again in the conservation of energy during the control volume principles. We have a head loss, it is very similar to that. Again, what is the unit in here? It is in length as well, okay? So now let me, what I'm going to do this head loss is, I need to explain this a little bit further in, to you, okay? And that's exactly what I'm going to do. And what we do is actually, we divide this into two components. One is the major, one is the minor. Okay. And HL major, if you think about this, this will be due to viscous effects in straight pipes. What I mean by that is that it's just a constant diameter pipe and there's no bend, there's no valve, there's no other pipe components, okay? And in fact, what I mean is when I have minor losses, that will account for it, okay? And this is due to various pipe components, okay? So to be more specific, I can have valves, right? I can have bands in my flow, and I do, right? Bunch of T's where two branches come together and form one, or vice versa as well, okay? And in this segment, 
I will focus on this separately. I will first find my HL major and I will find HL minor and I'll sum them up. And once I get my HL, I'll put it over here and proceed very similar to what I've been doing in the previous segments as well. Okay. One thing is um, this HL major is that much bigger than HL minor by the name recommends? Not necessarily. Okay. This component may be larger than this depending on my system. If I have short pipes and bunch of different bands, valves, T's, then HL minor may be larger than HL major. Okay. So I'd like you to note that. Okay. So let's start with the major losses in the order of what I cover. So let's do that. Major losses. What I'm going to do is I'll got, I will take a very similar approach when I did the laminar flow in this particular segment as well. Okay. If you remember from the laminar flow analysis, we said that if I have a pipe like this, a straight pipe, remember major losses only account for a straight pipe, there's no bends, right? So the diameter is this, this is the velocity that I have, okay? This will be a function of velocity, diameter, and the length of this particular pipe, okay? And if you remember, I said viscosity, and I stopped over there, I closed the parentheses for the laminar flow. Now, as I'm doing the turbulent flow, there will be two more parameters. One, you may be familiar with. It's called the density, right? It's only fair that density comes into the play, okay? And the last one is the epsilon. And let me explain what epsilon is. Epsilon is the measure of roughness of the pipe wall. Okay, so this is basically the roughness of the pipe that I have. Okay, let's say that I have a copper pipe. There's an associated roughness of the copper surface. If I have a PVC pipe, um, and you will find out, we'll talk about this, that will be assumed to be fully smooth. What it means is the roughness will be zero. Okay, so this will be a particular value, but the important thing here is it's going to be the unit of length. Okay, so now let's go ahead and look at what is my k value for this particular case is. It is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay, so I have 7. And r, if you do look at it, you will see that it is 3. So it's going to be m, l, and t, or it will be f, l, t if you're using f, l, t system. Okay, a typical giveaway is if you have a viscosity, it typically has all three, okay? So now, this is three, so then what I'm gonna do is I'm using Buckingham Pi theorem, I will be obtaining four pi terms, okay? In the laminar, I had two pi terms, now I have four pi terms. Okay, I will not be repeating the whole analysis. Actually, I have done a very similar version when I was covering the pi theorems, okay? But I just wanna let you know that I will be picking D, V, and density is my repeating variable, and I will obtain four pi terms this way, okay? Pi one will be obtained by a combination of, well, let's kind of go over the process a little bit at least, okay? So as the name recommends, the repeating variables repeat in all the pi terms, okay? And you may wanna visit the videos from the pi terms if you're not quite following what I'm doing over here. We explained in detail, as well as we introduced some examples. And I said that, if you remember, then we will be check marking the parameters that we have accounted for already, right? And what's left here is delta P, and I recommended that you put this on the left-hand side of the parameter, okay? For the prediction equation reasons, if you remember. And then I will have L over here, because I haven't accounted for that yet. I haven't accounted for viscosity yet over here, right? And the last one is the epsilon, okay? And the last one will be the epsilon, okay? So if I do go ahead and do my analysis, you'll find out that this will be delta P over one over two rho V square. 
obviously this one half is something that I added by convenience. You're not gonna get one half if you do analyze this, okay, as phi term. But you can verify at home that this delta p over rho v squared is a non-dimensional number, okay? So the second one from here is gonna be ending up with L over D because L has a unit of length and the diameter has a unit of length as well. The third one will be the Reynolds number, okay? Rho V D over nu, let's write that. Rho V D over nu, it's very familiar. We talked about that as well. And the last one, I just wanna to bring to your attention that this epsilon, unit of epsilon is length. So then I'm gonna get myself epsilon over D, nice. So then, if I write this this way, it's going to be delta p over 1 half rho v square, which is my pi 1, will be a pi function of pi 2, pi 3, and pi 4. Okay? So this is as far as I can go with my dimensional analysis. So now, if I do an experiment, with this delta p over 1 over 2 rho v square okay and what happens is we notice when we do the experiments that this is proportional to l over d so the l over d once it l over is increases this basically pi pi 1 increases by l over d so what it means is i can take out this l over d from this function and i'm going to write it this way okay so basically then this delta p over 1 half rho v square, which is the first pi term, will be equal to L over d because it's proportional. And there's a function Reynolds and epsilon over d. So this is as far as I can go. But I will connect this to the previous segment that we have. In the previous segment, which was laminar, okay, this is what we had. If you remember our video, you had this. L over D, and there was an F, and I call this Darcy friction factor. And in fact, this F was 64 over Reynolds, right? So basically, it was L over D times 64 over Reynolds for laminar. So I want to compare these two equations, okay? Left hand sides, they are the same. The first term on the L over D, they are the same. And look here, this is equal to this, right? So because I'm multiplying both the same. So I can kind of combine these equations into one unique equation, okay? My f now becomes a function of Reynolds number and epsilon over d, okay? In general terminologies, okay? Let's call this turbulent, okay? If I have laminar, I will get f is equal to 64 over Reynolds. Okay, now let's go and revisit the equation that we started this particular segment with. And the equation was like this P1 over specific weight plus V1 squared over 2G plus Z1 plus HP will be equal to P2 over specific weight plus V2 squared over 2G plus Z2 plus HL. Right? So, as I mentioned, this HL major is for a constant diameter straight pipe. The gravity doesn't affect the flow ins inside of it, okay? So, let's take a section like this as 1. Let's take a section as two, like this as 2, okay? Can I simply go ahead and call Z1 is equal to Z2? Yeah, if I select my datum to be here, then, yeah, that's a fairly reasonable assumption. Or that's not even an assumption, it's a fact. So, Z1 and Z2 will cancel, okay? I don't see any pump that's generating any power or something like that over here. So my HP will be zero, okay? How about V1 and V2? Well, V1 and V2 will be equal to each other from the conservation of mass because the conservation of mass will tell you that the volumetric flow rate must be constant and from the volumetric rate you will get V1A1 is equal to V2A2. We have videos that explain these. A1 and A2 are equal to each other because the diameter side the same constant diameter, so I get myself v1 is equal to v2, so this cancels out. Okay? Do I have any HL minor component? No, because it's only for valves, bands, etc., right? Some uh, components of pipes. 
I don't have any of those, so that drops out. So this only actually becomes HL major. So now if I go back and revisit my question, you will see the only thing that I have left over here is this. HL major will be equal to P1 minus P2 divided by specific weight, right? This is what I have. And I'm going to call this P1 minus P2 is delta P, right? That was the parameter what I was trying to obtain over here. So this becomes delta P over the specific weight. Now, if I go back over here and I will show you that I actually obtained this, right, from here. And I call this F. Actually, it's right over here, right, F. And basically, what I need to do is now I need to move 1 over to the row V squared to the right-hand side of the equation and reorganize it. So why don't we do, do that? Okay, it should be fairly straightforward. So if I do that, you see that my delta P from the equation will be F, which is the Darcy friction factor, length of the pipe divided by the diameter of the pipe, which is non-dimensional, rho V squared over 2. And then, basically, as I know this, I will take this and I will basically go ahead and plug into here. Okay, so let's do it. So my HL major then will be equal to F L over D rho V square over 2 divided by, I'm going to call this rho G, which is a specific weight, because I want to get rid of the density over here. And you can see over here that I get myself an HL major of F L over D times V square over 2. Let's not forget the G as well. Okay, so this is actually the formula for HL major. And you can notice that this is a function of F. If it is laminar, this is 64 over Reynolds. If it is turbulent, I will talk about it right now, right after this, okay? I will explain you how to obtain your F value. L is fairly straightforward. I look at how long my pipe is, and I look at what is the diameter of the pipe is. V is the velocity that I have in my flow, right? And G is just the constant acceleration due to gravity. So this is a fairly straightforward, okay?